by the end of this video you will learn how to create apple ui style shape morph animations inside of fusion i'm gonna get straight into the tutorial we're gonna create a background first and i'm gonna just change its color to this blue color feel free to change the color to any color that you want we're gonna make this single view what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an ellipse and then morph into a rounded rectangle we're going to create an ellipse using a rectangular mask we will increase the corner radius and since these animations involve that uh, bounce elastic bounce animation we're going to use anim curves for this so right click on the width and go to modify with anim curves we have the modifiers over here at the top i'm going to set the source to duration curve to easing and we'll get the different types of curves over here and we're going to use the elastic curve Set the time scale to four, but you are, but, but feel free to change the time scale. I think four looks perfect for this sort of animation. And if you play this, this is how it is going to look. We'll go to the modifiers again, and we will reduce the size. I mean the scale, sort of create an ellipse out of it. Now, if you're unsure how it is going to look, uh, you can also see that we have this gizmo over here you can kind of use that to see if this rectangle shape is looking like an ellipse or not or you can create a separate background with an ellipse mask and compare the two so i'm going to use this uh, gizmo that is on the screen right now if i just play the animation right now you can see that it's just animating like that um let's go with the modifiers again and i'm going to scale it down even more and kind of match it up with the size of this gizmo over here then i'm going to go to tools again and this time we'll target the height go to modify with anim curves i'm going to modify again and we will use the same settings duration easing elastic the time scale should be four and reduce the scale till it matches the height of this gizmo you can zoom in to this but it will change the size of the gizmo once you're happy this is how it is going to look right now we want to morph into a round rectangle and for that we have to create a new shape i think this is the most easiest way to create these morph animations but i might be wrong i don't see a way to do this in inside of the single anim curve i just like to create a separate shape for this let's take a look at the merge one just so that we can see the different shapes i'm going to change the color here on this rectangle which is connected to the second background we'll just reset the width and the height so i'm going to double click on both of these properties to reset them right click on width modify with anim curves with the modifiers set the source to duration curve to easing set the out to elastic and time scale to four you can see the animation happens from the very first frame i want to make it happen at frame 60 because this is where the animation the first animation dies down of this ellipse so let's take a look at it played and you can see that it dies down at frame 60 so this is where i'm going to place my playhead and in the modifiers i want to change the time offset such that this pill disappears completely so it disappears at frame 0 0.2 all right cool so now what we want to do is we want to create an ellipse shape from this frame from frame 60 and the way we do that is by increasing the offset so we will set this to around this value because we want to match it up with the previous shape and we want to change the scale as well but for now let's just leave it as it is we'll go to the tools right click on height modify with anim curves modifiers and let's use the same settings set this duration easing and elastic set the time scale to four and set this to 0.2 now we want to change the offset and i'm going to match it up with the previous ellipse there we have it and now it's gonna scale it up like crazy like this but in the height we will reduce the scale so let's just reduce it something like this and reduce the width as well in the scale something like this and let's go to the background over here and change the color back to that blue 
I have saved it in my swatches. You can do that as well and just see how that looks. Okay, so we have our first animation and you can see that it does this behavior because we are actually seeing the second ellipse. If I just change the color real quick, you can see it is overlapping it. That's why you're not able to see that. But if I hit control D, then we will see our first ellipse and then the second one. So I want to hide first ellipse at frame 60. I'm going to go to the rectangle one, create a keyframe there, go to frame 61 and set this to set the level to zero. And on the second rectangle, what I'm going to do is go to frame 60, set the level to zero, go to frame 61 and set the level to one. And let's also change the color real quick. Set that to blue play this this is how it's gonna look you can see that we have this really cool and clean uh, morph animation now let's add some text let's type in some text real quick let's also go with the same font that Apple uses we will add in a follower to this I think the width and the height is correct you can you know always change that over here I'm gonna right click in the text field click on follower go to modifiers over here then set a delay of one for now we might have to change it we will see that in a moment go to transform and in the transform i'll set this two words now i will unlink these two properties x and y so actually we have to right click on it and click on modify with because i only want to I want to have a, like a slider instead of these two inputs over here so the way we do that is by right clicking on it modify with xy path and now in the xy path we have these separated over here i'm going to remove the keyframes from here and we'll right click on the y and modify it with anim curves cool so um now in here we'll set the same settings duration easing and set this to elastic time scale to four and set this to point two as well so animation will look something, it'll look weird. That's completely fine. But let's just fix that by changing the scale, I guess, and see what that does. Yeah, it goes to the top over here, but now we will use the offset over here and kind of bring it in the center like that if it's not perfectly centered just you know keep on changing the position in the offset now it should be in the center there you have it i think that is too intense so what i'm going to do is go to the modifiers over here i think i'll just reduce the scale quite a bit and let's play this again and i will just change the offset again and bring it in the center like so play it again there we have it that's much better. Now I want to restrict this text in this blue box. I'm going to go to the merge over here for that. Set the operator to N. If that didn't work, just uh, click or tap the down arrow key and cycle through different operator modes. And you can see that now it's um, masked into this bonding box or the blue box. If you think that it is a bit too fast, you can, of course, go to the modifiers over here you can definitely go to the follower over here timing and perhaps just increase that and you know it will be slower i think that is too slow so i'm gonna set this to 1.5 yep and once you do that then i want to morph this rounded rectangle back into an ellipse so for that, we will create another copy of these shapes. Um, connect that up like so. And on the rectangle, we will reset width and the height. Now, if we take a look at it, this is how it is going to look. And real quick, let's just um, change the color of this background. I'm going to right click on width, modify with anim curves. With the modifiers, set this to duration, easing, and set this to elastic. Time scale to four. What we want to do is make sure that this is rounded rectangle. For that, we have to change the scale. 
and we're going to match it up with the scale of our previous rounded rectangle and do that with the height as well right click modify with anim curves the duration easing elastic set the time scale to four and change the scale till it matches up like that and should cover the whole thing if i go back and change the color the to color to blue we should have this uh, shape and there is no animation to this that's because it's actually being animated from the way from this frame over here you want to delay that as well so it should animate from frame 140 so let's go to the rectangle and go to modifiers change the time offset and we're gonna move it till this entire thing disappears so this is the value that I'll, I'll be using 0 0.468 what we want to do is we want to make sure that this is a, a rounded rectangle so you have to change the offset increase it basically and we're going to match it up like so you can see that there is a gizmo that will you know kind of guide you how much you have changed the width and the height that's a pretty handy feature in fusion i'm going to use the same time offset actually we can link it up as well so we'll just use the expression for this right click time offset expression and use the pick whip tool to link it with the time offset over here and we will increase the offset on the width this time match it up like so and then we want to move forward in time and reduce the scale till it's a ellipse like that this is going to be different than the first ellipse over here which is this small size I want this size to be big enough like so yeah so i'm gonna leave that like so take a look at it and now it's gonna morph from this rounded rectangle to this ellipse shape now again we need to go to frame 140 on this rectangle we will animate the level double click on it to reset the level over here create a keyframe set it to zero at that frame and let's go to frame 141 set the level to one so we are essentially hiding it before 140 frame and after 140 we are making it appear like so we'll go to frame 140 and we have to go to the very first rectangle and make it disappear so let's create a keyframe on level go to frame 141 and set this to zero so that we have this sort of transition okay so it's going to morph back into an ellipse so first it's an ellipse morphs into a rounded rectangle and then it's going to morph back into a, this bigger ellipse over here now which is going to be our marker for our map so let's go to media pool and drag in our map inside and if we take a look at this map this is how it's going to look and uh, it's um this resolution over here um i took the screenshot from the maps application on mac but you can use google maps or anything that you want uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a 1920 by 1080 version of this map because this is 3360 by this value over here i'm going to use a background node for this and let's take a look at this merge Hit control t now it's in a 1920 by 1080 composition the reason i'm using this method and not using the letter box method is because i still want to retain the areas of the map over here outside this 1920 by 1080 composition because i want to move it around but if i use letter box then I, I i will lose the all the contents that we cannot see around the map so let's just connect that up like so and take a look at merge 5 and you have hit Control T or Command T to see that um, blue uh, indicator over here. Now with the merge over here, I can move around the map over here. I will just place it in the bottom left corner. And I am kind of focusing or putting this dot, this blue dot in the middle of this road. And I will just animate it. If you think that this size of this dot 
is too big you can either increase the map size or you can reduce the size of the dot itself but i think we'll just keep this as it is and i want to create the keyframe at um uh, let's see at this frame i guess at this frame so let's use frame 150 for this all right so create a keyframe and let's move forward to maybe about frame 250 and change the position and i'm going to make sure that we are in the middle of this road over here okay so finally we can connect it up with this media out and we have this map animation covering the whole thing so we have to mask that out as well so let's just add in a rectangle mask to this or you can just add in a rectangle mask to this merge over here okay and uh, that doesn't seem to work we had to create rectangle mask on the merge four over here which is at the top here we just want to make corner radius rounded just for the sake of aesthetics and we will just make some changes to the width and the height over here all right so finally we can add in a background node to this set this background to white and let's take a look at it i'll hit Control t or command t on the keyboard and we have a black color over here that's because of this background we will set this to alpha set the alpha to zero now our animation will look something like this now our map is visible from the very first frame we'll use the rectangle over here to mask it out so let's go to frame 150 create a keyframe on level set that to zero go to frame 151 and set this back to one so this is how our animation will look There we have it. Finally, what you can do is you can select all these nodes that have these diamond icons attached to it uh, because these are the ones that are that have keyframes on them and we want to enable motion blur on all of these. So double click on it, go to settings and enable motion blur on all of these. So that's pretty much it. That's how you can create the shape of Apple style UI animation inside of DaVinci Resolve. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it will help you in your upcoming projects. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.